the truth that nobody tells you about high-speed 3D printing. You think you can put like 200, 300, 400, 600 millimeters a second in your 3D printer, it's gonna run like crazy to execute this print. We're going to the theory behind it. I'm gonna show you exactly what happens if I just put these settings over there and then hit slice. But now, after we see the slice model, everything that it was supposed to be 500 millimeters a second was supposed to be in red. But the entire model is now in green and blue that if you look, and what we have in the color scheme is about between 173 up to 10 millimeters a second. But when I look at the Bamboo Lab official website, the A1 Mini is able to reach up to 500 millimeters a second. But then why the slicer does not reach the speed that the manufacturer tells that my printer is able to reach? So before we go into the details, we need to understand what this slicer actually does. Well, when you open up a slicer, you insert several different numbers. And with those numbers, the slicer is going to create some calculations, correlate those numbers, and create sort of a script of everything your printer will be doing during, during the entire process of 3D printing. So to summarize, our 3D printer gets a bunch of lines telling them what to do line by line, which is layer by layer. So when we look here, we can kind of see the entire G code being written in the slicer. So if you stop and look at the line 699,300 something, G1 means movement. So it's the movement that it's gonna make on the X and Y and how much it's going to extrude on the E. So it's going to make literally hundreds of thousands of movements that are going to be written in these lines of code. So now you understood that what the slicer does, it gets all these numbers, calculates and translate that into instructions for our printer in terms of lines of code. However, you might be wondering then why the, the slicer is not sending the speed that I told it to send to my printer. And I'm gonna tell you why. Because the slicer, more than just give the instruction, it's also a calculator. And we have a few settings here that are safety settings. So some of these settings, they're able to limit some of the things that you are inputting over there in order to improve the safety and the quality that you are going to be making your prints. And there's one setting that does change a lot everything, which is the maximum volumetric speed. So when you go to your slicer, you're gonna go on the filament settings and then scroll all the way down and you will find limitation maximum volumetric speed and this setting is measured by cubic millimeters a sec so it's a volume setting right so it's going to calculate the amount of volume that it's going to extrude on a single second and before you ask me yes this setting is available on all slicers Creality Cloud, Bamboo Slicer and here on the one that we're using the Arca Slicer and now let's go together and let's understand how this setting is actually calculated how they calculate the cubic millimeters a second so it's basically a multiplication of three factors that we embed on our slicer which is layer high extrusion width and speed so it's the multiplication of these three crucial factors so if we are printing at a 0.2 layer height with a 0.4 layer width at 100 millimeters a second our maximum volumetric speed is going to be 8 cubic millimeters a second. And remember, when we did the first time, we wanted to reach 500 millimeters a second. So if we multiply this number by 5, we would have a 40 cubic millimeters a second. And we originally had in the default of the slicer 12. And when you look at the slicer, it's clearly stating volumetric speed limitation, maximum volumetric speed, 12 millimeters a second. So when I put 500 millimeters a second in all of these settings, 
my printing has never gone over 12 millimeter cu cubic millimeters a second and that is the equivalent of 150 millimeters a second so basically any speed that i put that it's over that number the slicer is going to limit to 150 millimeters a second. This does change slightly depending on the material you're using. It does vary from ABS to PLA or some sort of PLA that are high speed PLAs. So these things, they change slightly. So you can handle that depending on the filament that you are using. When we look at the bamboo slicer, look what bamboo has done. So for the generic PLA, the, which is the, the setting that they recommend for every manufacturer that is not bamboo, they put 12 cubic millimeters a second. However, if you change to the bamboo lab PLA, what you will see is that the max volumetric speed is 25 cubic millimeters a second which is approximately 300 millimeters a second so that's much closer from the one that they put on their website the same way if you put the hyper pla from creality on a creality high it's gonna give you a bigger number so what i'm saying here is that you are not blocked to the default max volumetric speed you can change that number in order to improve the speed of your prints so basically every filament it's going to have a different performance depending on the printers that you are using it but now that we have done enough math for today i'm gonna show you how you can actually test and get to the ideal result of your max volumetric speed if you are aiming to print at high speeds. So inside Orca Slicer, when we go to the calibration tab, we have the max flow rate under the more, all right? So the test that I will be performing is going from 100 millimeters a second to 600 millimeters a second. So if you multiply 0.2 times 0.4, times 100 it's gonna give you eight cubic millimeters a sec and then 600 would be six times this number so we are going to put 48 cubic millimeters a sec and i'm gonna make one millimeter per step to make it a faster test you can't do faster tests no worries and spoiler alert it's not gonna reach the 600 millimeters a second and then you might be wondering but what the hell is this test if it does not reach 600 millimeters a second well, you are going to look at your result and you will see at what point your filament started to fail. So as you can see, we have these steps on the side and each step is the change in speed that we have in the model. And then you can see according to the height here in the slicer, comparing the G code with the model at which height your PLA stopped working. So the first test, you can see that it goes up to a certain point and then it starts to fail. That's when we reach 300, 400 millimeters a second, and then the printer cannot extrude that correctly. So let's remove everything and let's repeat the test. So after I started, I'm going to go here on the nozzle temperature and I'm going to increase by 10 degrees, 230 degrees Celsius. There you go. When we reach a certain height and you don't have enough temperature to push all that filament in, the piece starts to fail the filament starts to fail it's not able to extrude it anymore at the speed that the printer is demanding but now as you can see when we increase the temperature it did perform a little bit better we were able to achieve better results so now let's put them side to side to compare and as you can see the second one performed a lot better when you start to see the holes and the small fails it's because there is not enough pla being extruded over there so it cannot deposit on top of the other layer and that's when you start to see the fails happening. So now we're going to measure and see at which point, at which speed it stopped working perfectly. And we're obviously going to compare the 230 degrees with the 220 degrees using the same G code, same filament and the same printer. So looking at our first print, if you measure it, our failures started to happen on the 16 millimeters. If we move on to the side and look a little bit closer, 15 millimeters is where we started to see some fails happening. When we increase the temperature, the first fails begin at 20 millimeters. Moving to the side, also about the same thing, 22 millimeters. So between 22 and 23 millimeters is where we started to see those fails happen. So now let's look at the slicer to see what that corresponds in terms of speed. So we had our first fails when it was leaving this first yellow, 139 millimeters a second, between 160 
66 millimeters a second. So it's transitioning between these two speeds. But in different types of files, you can print in this temperature because it changes the direction so much. So it has to accelerate again several different times. And what happens when you do that is that you don't reach these speeds that often. And then you don't see those fails. Those fails don't happen because you don't have enough speed to make those fails happen. After we increase the temperature, our fails started at about 23 millimeters up until 25 millimeters. And now we are leaving the 193 millimeters per second speed mark up until the 220 speed mark, roughly. As you can see, when it gets, starts to get a little bit red, it had been failed already. So that's about it. That's about the speed that we were able to reach. So I wanted to show you here how you can increase your speed and also by changing slightly your temperature, you make the filament more fluid, more easy to be extruded and you can reach higher speeds. And now in here we have a different filaments just to show you that different filaments will make different results. So it's always important for you to test when you change types of filaments, brands, and etc. All right, so we canceled the print, completely failed. Let's look at which height the fail happened. As you can see, it started to fail around 15, 16 millimeters. If we look on the side, there was a failure much earlier at one at 11 millimeters. And this goes to show you that even if you have just PLA on your farm, different filaments will have different results. And that's due to the coloring, that's due to the brand, that's due to a lot of different factors. This is why it's important to test if you want to stretch your printer capability of printing really fast. Obviously here we're seeing very strong failures and that's due to the fact that we are pushing it to the extreme. On your day-to-day -day activities, what you will see is that little clicking noise that happens or some small cloggings. This is what you will see when sometimes you push it the speed too much. So you can try to increase the temperature as one way to go. Obviously clogs usually have more than one possible reason for them to happen but the temperature can be one of the cases if you are pushing the speeds a bit closer to the limit. What you have just witnessed is the power that one simple setting change can have in your 3D prints. Obviously, the temperature is one of the most relevant settings that we have on our hands. As you can see, 10 degrees Celsius is already enough to determine whether it's going to be successful or if it's going to completely fail. Leave your like and subscribe to your channel if this video brought you some new information that you didn't know about high-speed 3D printing. There's also one more setting that you can tweak and change that it's going to help you increase the quality of your prints, which is the minimum layer time. And if you want me to make a video about it, comment down below that you want to see more about it. And perhaps we can make a video to discuss it. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it brought some meaningful information for you. And as always, See you next time. Happy printing.